So in our lecture from Monday, we discussed uh, the key concepts of light were the electromagnetic waves. Uh, the source of any electromagnetic wave is a vibrating ion, mostly it's electrons. Uh, the nature of reflection, the incoming angle equals the reflected angle. And the nature of refraction, when light passes through two transparent media that have a different index of refraction or density, the light will bend. Light bends towards the normal if it's a denser material, or it will bend away from the normal if it is a less dense material. But today, uh, we're going to take a look into applications of light refraction and um, watch a video on the interference and diffraction of light. So in the line, figure, uh, line three of the figure below, as you can see, the angle of incidence is at some critical value such that the angle of refraction equals 90 degrees. We can see that the medium one would be what, less dense or more dense? Medium one. If you think less dense, you'd be correct because the angle is bending away from the normal as it passes into medium one. So the critical angle is when the refracted angle equals 90 degrees. This will only occur when the ratio of N2 over N1 is less than 1. So if the ratio is less than 1, that means the numerator has to be less than 1. Um, in this case, I should scratch this. In this case, medium 1, we'll call that N1. Medium 2 is N2. In this case, N1 is less than N2. So in this case also, N1 is the medium in which light travels to. In other words, it's the outgoing media or medium. All right, so the outgoing medium has to be um, less dense or it has to have a lesser index of refraction. So if the incident angle exceeds the critical angle, the angle of refraction will exceed 90 degrees, and the light will appear to be internally reflected. This is a phenomenon aptly called total internal reflection. As we can see in this picture here, the angle, the incoming angle, is greater than the critical angle um, so that the light appears to be reflected off the top of the surface. So some applications of this, uh, na the nature of light, um, in this case, is with diamonds. So the way the diamond is cut will allow the incoming light uh, to bounce at different angles inside of, the, uh, inside of the material. Once it does leave the um, diamond material, the light disperses in, at different angles. So the internal light reflection makes the diamond look sparkly. As we can see, inside that white light is the reflected light, um, totally internally reflected. Also, fiber optics, how we communicate in the 21st century, um, uses total internal reflection. So if we have a material uh, such as fiber optics, and I believe the uh, inventors of fiber optics a couple of years ago, if not last year, won the Nobel Prize in physics for this invention um, because they utilized total internal reflection in order to maintain um, a steady flow of light from one end of the world to the other. So light continues to bounce inside of the stream, as we can see on the right-hand side, um, following its path.
Looking at the math behind the critical angle, we can set up using Snell's law to find the critical angle. Um, but in order to know the critical angle, we would have to know first two things. We would have to know the index of refraction for both materials. Uh, if we're talking about air, N1, uh, that's the medium, let's say the diamond. If we're talking about air, then N2 is equal to 1. So if the material is in air, then really all we would have to know is the index of refraction of the material. Um, but essentially, we would need to know the ratio of N2 over N1 to know the critical angle. Remembering that the outgoing medium has to have a smaller index of refraction for internal reflection. One more application that we're going to talk about is the uh, lenses that correct eyesight vision um, so that it bends the waves or bends the light to uh, end up at a focal point. Uh, at the retina. So the way the eye is shaped could offset that focal point not on the retina. Uh, so on the left hand side we have three different examples of um, somebody who has um, poor eyesight who has a, a, um, uh, so some issue with the eyeball. Okay, so the first example, uh, hyperopia. The image is focused past the retina uh, in order to correct that, we want to converge the uh, light rays so that they become closer. We would use two convex lenses together in order to do that. Uh, in the middle, we have myopia, where the focal point falls short of the retina. We would use two concave lenses to correct that. Uh, lastly, we see that the... Uh, the parallel rays coming in do not converge uh, at the same point. This is astigmatism. The two unequally focused parts of the image, they're indicated by the solid and dashed line. So this is a combination lens that would be used to fix, fix it. So lenses can be used to refract light in, the very, in, a, in a specified way. We're going to look at the phenomena of interference and diffraction of light. Um, and this was established, the phenomenon known as diffraction was established during um, Young's double slit experiment, is what you see in this image here. Uh, he was the first one who really found the dual nature of a wave, or of a light wave, or of light, as both a wave and a particle. So, Based on his experiments, uh, he demonstrated that uh, light also acts as a wave. In order to fully comprehend um, his experiment, we're going to take a look at a video on hippocampus. It's about seven minutes. Um, so what we're going to do to get out of this video is we're going to observe the difference between, in Young's experiment, using one slit or one opening versus two slits or even many slits and see how that changes the pattern that's displayed on the screen. We're also going to derive an equation to experimentally determine the wavelength of light using this diffraction grating. Diffraction grating is something that just has many slits. Uh, we're also going to read through and work out that last problem. So there's one kind of big problem at the end that if worked through will be aptly prepared for any kind of question like that on the AP exam. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to hippocampus.org, um, scroll down after we go into AP physics. We're going to scroll down to physical optics. We're going to click on the interference section, but we're going to skip to section three. We're only getting the uh, most important information out of this. So we're going to click on that bubble 
three. So we're going to start the interference notes on that. So you'll continue to take notes. Um, through section five. So this here is section five. This is the problem that we're going to read through and work on. You can do it. It's going to be a little uh, bit longer than, you know, basic problem, but you'll be really, really prepared if you uh, learn and understand how to do that problem. So that's it for the notes on this page. Good hippocampus and